Hello, you guys. This is me in my exercise outfit. I'm probably going to be working out on this pretty soon. I'm just letting you know, I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that I was in Los Angeles on a special trip, and my my purpose, my pur the purpose for the trip was to visit John MacArthur's church out there in the L.A. area, and I was I was in his church, and I wanted to hear John MacArthur himself, and I kept be being led to other compartments of his church where I, it was a really strange dream. And then I dreamt that like the air conditioning got really powerful and the church was about to explode because the Jesuits were mad because I was at his church. And then after about dreaming about being, going all over his church to try to find the real John MacArthur. And then I ended the dream where I had to use the restroom. It's probably because I really did have to use the restroom. <laughs> and then I woke up. I was like dreaming about that. And I asked Brett, why in the world did I have a dream about John MacArthur's church out there in Los Angeles? And Brett said, well, this is brain to brain. He said, John MacArthur and his church have all just joined Church of Gale. He said, uh, he said, John MacArthur and a lot of Christian leaders out there that have like earned doctorates in theology and Bible and all that sort of stuff. He said, a lot of them are... Um, listening to our new Sunday school teacher, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, who is a Messianic Jewish believer and a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary and other schools. He's the best Bible teacher I've ever heard. So I made a video about him and my men investigated him and decided to have him join our Church of Gale. So now we got a really, really good Bible teacher. We got the best church in the world. At our church... Jesus Christ himself shows up sometimes. And he's actually had us do the Lord's Supper. In the, in a, he actually led us in a Lord's Supper worship where he, he would actually cause like bread and food and stuff like, or Burger King fish sandwiches. <laughs> he, he just, he like does stuff like that. And he'll, he'll make them multiply and just pass them out. He does like a, so when Jesus shows up at our church, he often repeats what he did with his disciples when he came the first time. I think he's trying to like, it's like, to me, it seems like, like things are kind of like going in reverse. When the church first started, Jesus worked with 12 Jewish disciples, okay? They were Jewish, which is something the church seems to have forgotten that the the church started out as a Jewish church, okay, with Jewish disciples. Even the apostle to the Gentiles, the apostle Paul, was a Jew. And so, um, and then what happened is the Jewish nation rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, though there's always been a remnant of Jews who have accepted him. Me and Brent Spiner, we are part of that remnant. We have King, we have, I have King David genes, so I guess I would be considered Jewish even though I wasn't raised in a Jewish home. So I, I think I would be considered part of the Jewish remnant, which is described in the Bible in the Old Testament, New Testament. You got to listen to Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum. He's got a whole message on the Jewish remnant, which is fantastic. I, I've actually created a playlist for him, and anybody who wants to get really deep into the Bible, you need to listen to this guy. And what's really exciting is a lot of um, like King James only believers, even fundamental Baptists. Uh, we're we're getting people from all denominations. I hear even like Mormons and Catholics and Jesuits. A lot of people are defecting their religion and joining our Church of Gale because what they're hearing from like Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum and my testimony, and they're starting to believe me when I say that the real Jesus has showed up at our church service. Another exciting thing that's happened is that um, while I was researching for my book, Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom, Robin Williams from Heaven, oh, by the way, here's how I look like following the Gale commandments. Uh, uh, I, I have to admit, I've had my, I sometimes at night I get really, really hungry and I pig out on strawberries and nonfat sour cream or honey roasted peanuts. But despite that, I'm keeping my weight about 124 or 123 in the morning. And I'm, I am doing some waist exercises, some facelift exercises, and I work out on this machine, and I also go walk every day. And when I work out on this machine, I do like the Gale commandments, and I open my windows. So here's, 
as the leader of Church of Gale, I am supposed to set an example. And Jesus has ordered me to take care of my temple. That's the body. So uh, you may say, you're not spiritual to show your body off in a bikini. Well, the reason I show my body off in a bikini is to set an example, to show that as a believer, we need to take care of our bodies. And we don't even have necessarily a hourglass figure or look like Miss America or Miss Universe. But we shouldn't let ourselves go. Our body is the temple. Okay, Jesus has ordered me to exercise, and I'm apparently the leader of Church of Gale, so I'm setting an example. Uh, there are several good reasons why you should exercise, besides looks, which is one of the minor reasons you should be doing it. It's good for your health. It uh, helps you live longer, helps your brain to work more clearly. Also, I believe that by exercising, you cause, especially aerobic exercise, you cause increased blood circulation. So like if you're taking Seroquel, it makes the Seroquel work more efficiently. So here I am at, I'm almost 59 years old. I'm going to be 59 uh, on September the 15th. And this is what I look like. And I am Jesus Christ's favorite. And um, so there's, even though the Jesuits are wrong in placing so much of an emphasis on the externals. And they, every time you read an article about one of their agents, whether it's Camilla Albays, Morgan Brown, which they paired up with Gerard Butler, or Lori McBride with uh, Brent Spina, they're always boasting about how gorgeous they think that their agents are. And the, the emphasis is always on the externals. It's never on the internals. And uh, uh, even though Jesus is not against an emphasis on externals, when you totally neglect the in, inward beauty, uh, which the Jesuits do, then it doesn't matter how good looking you are outward, but you're ugly. So anyways, but see, I, as the leader of Church of Gale, I'm showing that while, the, while much of what the Jesuits do is evil, some of what they do is kind of worth emulating. What I mean is Satan is not wrong in everything. Um, like, Jesus was telling me, he says, Gail, rock music is not sinful, okay? Um, apparently, that's something I was taught incorrectly. Um, he said, and I said, well, what kind of music does Satan like? And Jesus said, well, he likes um, Miley Cyrus. I think he mentioned her. He said it kind of makes him feel like he's getting some of the things that he's lost as the result of his fall. It kind of comforts him. He says, well, just because Satan likes Miley Cyrus doesn't mean that she, her music is evil, though. Jesus went right, well, he went, went right away and, and wanted to say that. And so one thing we, as Christians, we need to understand something. We need to be balanced, okay? Not everything that Satan likes is bad. So what we need to do is let's say the Jesuits emphasize something like the external beauty and maybe rock music and stuff. Just because they emphasize it doesn't mean it's bad. What it means is that we need to have a balanced perspective about it. Um, like some Christians go to the opposite extreme. Well, because Satan emphasizes bikinis and all his followers like to show off their bodies. Therefore, it's sinful to look good and to wear a bikini or to, or to be worried about whether you look attractive or not. No, it's not sinful. The key is balance. Yes, it's okay to pay attention to your appearance. It's okay for women to wear some makeup. It's okay to try to look nice, but balance, you know, like keep a proper perspective. In fact, some Christians get off balance. They'll think, oh, because Satan does that, I'm going to go to the opposite extreme. I'm going to be, I'm going to let myself get out of shape. I'm not going to exercise. I'm going to eat garbage. I'm going to, you know, like maybe eat 20, like they'll become like Sarah Avery and start, uh, Sarah Avery is a Christian almost, and start thinking, well, those health nuts are crazy. They're all into the new age movement, all the health fads. So therefore, I'm going to eat cakes and cookies. Now, okay, what I'm saying, it's okay, you know, to eat cakes and cookies. Jesus does that. The thing is, just be balanced, okay? Just don't get off balance. That's the main thing. So just because I wear some bikinis, does not mean I cannot be a spiritual leader at, at in Jesus Christ Church. And I, that's the main thing I'm trying to say. So today I decided to go a little more conservative just wearing my exercise suit. But as you can see, as the spiritual leader, I'm just letting you know that it's some not everything the Jesuits does do is bad. 
the, what you need to do is evaluate it in a balanced perspective, uh, reading your Bible and trying not to overemphasize some verses over other verses. And so anyways, it's so exciting. We also got a new, um, yeah, a new, I'm just making sure I'm not running out of my time. Can't go over 15 minutes. Jesus or rules. We got a new singer at our church. If you go to my writer's page, and I'll have a link for that underneath this video, I uh, discovered somebody who had who sang a song, who sang a song that somebody worked into a Song of Solomon video that really seems to emphasize the theme of my next book, which is Jesus Christ as the King, the Lover King, and um, and how that's the main reason he created the human race. So, anyways, it's just really exciting that. And lots of Jesuits, my Gale Shield's getting stronger. Jesuits are defecting and joining Church of Gale. Um, many, um, many prestigious leaders from mainline Christian denominations, like I hear John MacArthur and some others are joining our church. And there, I think, I'm not sure, but I hear that Brent Spire is meeting with some of them saying, you need to lay off a little bit on this doctrine. You're kind of off here because we've met with Jesus and he's corrected us here like, um, like John MacArthur doesn't believe in the signs anymore. He thinks the signs have ended. And yet we've had Jesus Christ show up at our church and give plenty of signs. So apparently, uh, the, apparently because we are transitioning into the tribulation and getting back to where I was earlier, Jesus started with Jews, with his church. It looks like he's going to be ending with Jews because I'm basically a Jewish believer with King David genes. The pastor of Church of Gale is... Uh, a Jewish man, my my husband. I consider my husband Brent Spiner, though I haven't lived with him yet. Jesus calls him my husband. If Jesus calls him my husband, he's my husband. And um, now we've got Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, a Messianic believer, I believe, is our main Sunday school teacher. He is the best Bible teacher ever, man. So we've got a church that's thoroughly grounded in Bible doctrines, where you can get very deep Bible truths from our Sunday school class. We've got the best music. Um, I think his name is Freddie Taylor or something. Um, I'll have a link. Go to my writer page and you'll hear, I believe, he's singing solos at our church now. He's from a charismatic uh, uh, charismatic background. So we got all sorts of Christians in our church. And it's exciting. Um, and we and it's under Jewish leadership. Me, Brent Spider, and the Donald, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, I hear all the main spiritual leaders at our church. And so... What Jesus is doing, using our church to, to pave the way for the tribulation when Jesus deals with the nation of Israel again. That's what's happening, folks, I can tell. And I'll be going more into that in my next book. Real, my next book's going to have some Bible doctrines in it. Uh, Jesus doesn't want me to discuss Bible doctrines on video, so I'm not going to go there. So, anyways, it's really exciting. <laughs> really exciting that uh, our church is growing, that the Gale Shield's getting stronger. We have the best church in the world. Jesus Christ himself shows up. You're going to get very sound Bible teaching here. Um, and Jesus, with Jesus as our ultimate teacher, because he meets with Brent all the time and he teaches Brent correct Bible doctrines. And um, though Jesus always seems more concerned about how we our Christian walk than our doctrines. It's like Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, if you give God your heart, you'll comb the kinks out of your head. So that's what I think is basically happening. So... Um, we don't, I don't totally agree with everything Dr. I've heard from Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum as a result of, you know, meeting with Jesus. Uh, no human teacher is going to be 100% right, but he is probably the best Bible teacher out there that I've ever heard. And we've got him as our Sunday school teacher. Got great singing. Freddie Haler, I believe his name is, charismatic singer. His music is ethereal. So, um, Lord, uh, Go to my overview page and check out my writer page to, for the latest.